In this episode, we are going to talk about the mesh current analysis. So how to find current in a circuit using the mesh analysis. So first, what is a mesh? So we are saying a mesh is a loop. We know what a loop is. So a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loop within it. Very simple. So when you say a mesh, it is a loop. That means a loop is also a closed path that current can pass through within what? A circuit. So a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loop within it. So meaning when we take one loop, we shouldn't find any other loop within it before we can make the mesh analysis. So once we know what a mesh is, we are also going to use KVL in mesh current analysis. So the mesh analysis is very simple. The mesh analysis applies KVL, the Kettle's voltage law. So let's get a diagram and make some analysis as to how we are going to go by with the mesh analysis. So I have my resistors and let's call this as a voltage source. I also have one over here. I have another voltage source over here as this. So this is closed. Let's call this resistor R1, call this R2. Please pay attention to the mesh analysis. I'll call this V2 as the voltage 2, call this V1. And I'll call this R3. We know that definitely current is going to move through this and we will call I'll move this current here as I1. And I'll move this current here as I2. And move current here as I3. So in mesh analysis, we are also, after we know what a mesh is, that it is a loop that does not contain any other loop within it, we know we are going to apply the KVL. In mesh analysis, we are not going to pay attention to this current assigned directly. Are we okay? We are also going to assign another current. We are going to assign another current. So looking at this, this current are assigned in what? Uppercase letters, say I1, I2, and I3. So we are going to assign another current, which is in lower case. Let's say I1, I2, up to the I n mesh that we have. So if we have three meshes, we are going to get I1 to I3. If we have two, we are going to get I1 and I2. These are small letter currents we are assigning to each mesh. So we can see that this part is one closed loop, right? There is no other loop within it. So we can get one mesh. It qualifies to be a mesh. It does not contain any other loop. So meaning if this does not contain any other loop, I will assign a current here. And this current is going to be my current, say I1, for the first mesh. Looking at the second part also, we have, this can also be a closed loop because there's no other loop within that. So I can assign another mesh current, I letter 2, I2 inside this second mesh. So let's assume there's a third mesh. We'll continue applying or assigning mesh current to the loops. But this is just two loop. So we are going to get two mesh current. So now we have this current assigned as the mesh current. So you can see the difference. This is small letter I1. This is small letter I2. So we are not paying attention to the original current, capital I1, capital I2, and capital I3. Now we have assigned our mesh current. You are going to apply KVL to each mesh, considering the mesh current. So 
place, you have to understand how to go by each of the analysis. So apply KVL to each number of meshes you have. Each number of meshes you have. So now we can have our mesh one, which is like from loop one this way. Here too, we have a resistor. This is our voltage source. We close it this way. I'm making the analysis from here. So here we have the mesh one and the current is I1. This is resistor one. This is resistor two. And this is V1. So looking at the direction of the mesh current that I have chosen, I'm saying that it is going this way. Are you okay? So now we are going to apply KVL, which is the voltage across resistor 1 and the voltage across resistor 2. Please pay attention. So across resistor 1, I'm going to say current I1 multiplying the current is small letter I1. So let's get it. Please, although there is an assigned current, big letter I1, we are paying attention to the mesh current inside it, the mesh current inside. So that is going to give me my small letter I1 multiplying R1. This same I1 is passing through the R2. If you don't pay attention to the mesh current, you are going to say this I3 is passing through the resistor 3. No, we are considering the mesh current. So plus the same mesh current is passing through that. But before that, look at here. What do you see? Inside this resistor, R3, can you see that R3, the mesh current I1 is passing through that, right? And this mesh current I2 is also going to pass through it. It is like they are opposing each other. So as I1 is coming down, I2 is also passing through the same resistor going up. So in that case, we are going to say the current is going to be what we are considering. Now we are considering I1. So it is going to be I1 minus the one we are not considering, I2, multiplying the resistor I2 or the resistor is what? R3. So this resistor is R3. So I'll call here R3. So R3 should be equal to the voltage. Look at the voltage. This current I1 that we are considering is moving out from the positive side of the voltage. So that's a positive voltage. There are a lot of things you have to pay attention in the mesh analysis. First, when you get to a place or a resistor where two currents are passing through it, two mesh currents, let me say that way, the mesh current I1 here is passing through this resistor down. The mesh current I2 here is passing through the same resistor up, but your consideration is on the I1 current, meaning it should be I1 minus I2. If your consideration is on the second mesh, that should be if they are also passing, should be I2 minus I1. You'll get this when we are solving match example. So we have this, we can expand this to get our I1, R1, and plus, we are also going to get I1, R3 minus I2, R3 equal to V1. And this, we can make, I want the subject from here. If you don't pay attention, you'll be tempted to write the big current I1. So this is I1, we have R1 plus R3 minus our I2, R3 equal to V1. as our first equation. Now, this is the consideration of the first mesh. Let's consider the second mesh which has the i2 the second mesh so now this is the second mesh with i2 and we are going to assume all this part is not there all this part is cut the same way we drew for the second so the mesh two 
MS2. Let's look at how we can do the equation analysis. The MS2. I have to draw the MS2. Let's go to the next page and see for the MS2. So the MS2 is in this form. We have our resistor over here and our voltage source as that. Here too, we have our resistor here and it is closing this way. So inside this is the mesh current I2 and the current passing through this is big collector 2 and R2, this is our V2. This is our R3 and the current here is I3. I've told you, you are not paying attention to this current. You are only considering the mesh current inside the loop. So now let's pay attention to the mesh current. So our example, find the current I1, I2 and I3 using mesh analysis. So this is our diagram and we are to solve this using the mesh analysis. So pay attention to this example and you will get it for the mesh analysis. So this is the circuit. First, we are going to ignore the current I1, the capital I1, I2 and I3 and you are going to introduce your own mesh current. So you are going to introduce the mesh current. So this is, we have two loops, so that's going to be current I1 and current I2, right? So we have two currents or two loops for the current. So this is going to be the first I1 and this is the second loop. This is also going to be for I2. Are we okay? So now let's consider the first mesh, the first mesh. We can draw the diagram this way. That is going to be the 2 ohm resistor and this is going to be for the 8. This is the voltage source which is that and that and it is closed. So this is 8 ohms, this is 2 ohms and this is our mesh current I1. So now our analysis is going to be very simple. So this is 32 the mesh current is passing through the 2 ohm resistor, so we are going to consider that as 2 multiplying the I1. Plus, it is also passing through the 8 ohm. But when you look at this, as the first I1 is passing through the 8, the second mesh current is also going up against it. So meaning two currents are opposing themselves. So that is going to be the 8 resistor multiplying and our focus is on the first mesh which is I1 minus I2 and that should give you now looking at the mesh current for the first one it is coming out from the positive part of what the voltage source so that will be positive 32 so we will make the analysis which is 2 I1 plus 8 I1 minus 8 I2 equal to 32. So our focus is not on the assigned current. We are only interested in the mesh current. Are we okay? So this is going to give me 10 I1 and minus 8 I2 equal to 32 as my equation 1. Now for the mesh 2, which is also going to look like this diagram. So the second part of the mesh, which is like this, this is the 4 ohm resistor and this is our voltage source, which is the 20 this way. And there's this 8 ohm resistor also available. So this is the 4 ohm, this is the 20 and this is the 8 ohm. The mesh current I2 is also moving in this direction. So we are also going to write the same equation. So the mesh current is passing through the 4 ohm, which is going to be 4 multiplying I2 plus it is passing through the 8 ohm. But remember, the current I1 from the mesh 1 is also passing through the 8 ohm. 
which is going to make it 8. But our focus is on the second mesh. So this is I2 minus I1. Looking at the first mesh, it is I1 minus I2 because the focus is on I1. Here, the focus is on I2. So this is going to be equal to the mesh current is coming now from the negative side of the voltage source. So that is going to give us negative 20. And when you make the analysis from here, you are going to get 4I2 and plus 8I2 minus 8I1 equal to negative 20. And this is going to give us, when you simplify this, you are going to get 12I2 minus 8I1 equal to negative 20 as our equation two so with the help of the mesh we are getting two equations which is equation one and equation two so you can use simultaneous equation they are both in terms of small letter i1 and what i2 so you can see that solving them simultaneously you can find small letter i1 to be 4 amperes and small letter i2 for the second current is also 1 amperes. These are the mesh currents. These are not the current the question is asking us to find. The current is asking us to find the capital currents which are flowing through it. And what we have are in terms of the mesh current we introduced. So now we are going to make the analysis to get the original current. You can see from the diagram that the I1 current is the same as the current, the mesh current passing through this. And they are in the same direction. So since the mesh current I1 passing through there is equal to the original current I1, then it is also equal to 4 amperes. Are we okay? When we look at the mesh current I2, this small mesh current I2, it is also passing through this 4 ohm resistor. And it is equal to, you can see that it is the negation. This I2 is opposing the mesh current in the negative direction of I2. And that is going to give us, since the mesh current is 1, this is going to be negative 1. And for the I3, we can apply the Kirchhoff's current law that if I3 is leaving, it should be equal to those entering I1 plus I2, which is going to give us I1 is 4 plus I2, which is negative 1, and that should give you 3 amperes. So with this, you can use the branch method to also verify for the answers and this is for the mesh current analysis in the next episode we are going to solve two examples using the mesh analysis also so let's look at them in the next episode kindly subscribe to the channel like the videos and let's hear your comments thank you